In our next video, we will be tackling this problem. The cable AB is subjected to a uniform loading of 200 newton per meter, and then if the weight of the cable is neglected and the slope angles at points A and B are 30 and 60 degrees respectively, we have to determine the curve that defines the cable shape and the maximum tension developed in the cable. Now we can't automatically say that this cable is defined by a simple parabolic equation. Now this is because the slope at A and the slope at B differs and so we will need to use some integration techniques. Now for these types of problems, we are essentially considering a specific point. It can be anywhere in our cable. However, to speed up our process, I have provided here the shortcut formula or the derived expression from this one. Again, uh, just to run through this one, uh, we are integrating W dx and so that will give us uh, Wx. And then in our first integration of this uh, inside expression, again we have Wx and then plus an arbitrary constant because this is an indefinite integral. And then if we will integrate this once more to account for this one, uh, then we have Wx squared divided by 2 uh, because we will add 1 to our exponent and then we will divide by this result. And so that's why this is Wx squared over 2. And then C1 will have a variable x. And so this will be C1x. And then since we are integrating the second time, then we will have a new arbitrary constant which is C2. And so that's why this is our equation. Now let's say that at this point, we have a tension force. And so this force will have a slope. Uh, let's say this is the slope with respect to the horizontal. And then the tangent of this slope is just equal to dy over dx. So dy over dx, that's equal to tangent theta. And so in order to get C1 and C2, uh, we need our boundary conditions. Now we know that at x equals 0, now again, we are considering this one as our origin, this point. Because again, this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis. And so at x is equal to 0, our y is also equal to 0. And so this is our first boundary condition. And so if you will substitute that here, uh, we have y will become 0 and then uh, all x values will be 0. And so we are left with C2. And so that's why our C2 will be 0. And so we already have our first arbitrary constant. Now to get the value of C1, we need another boundary condition. Now we can obtain that using our slope at A. Now uh, we know that at x is equal to 0, our dy over dx will be equal to uh, tangent theta. And in this case, uh, theta is equal to 30. And so this will be tangent 30. And so if you apply that here, we need to differentiate this one because this expression is dy over dx. And so uh, differentiating this function, we have dy over dx is equal to 1 over fh and then multiplied by wx and then plus c1. Again, we are differentiating with respect to x. And so that's why this is treated as a constant. Now again, uh, dy over dx will be tangent 30. And then all x values will be 0. And so we will substitute uh, 0 here. And then uh, dy over dx will become tangent 30. And so now we can solve for c1. Uh, this will become, uh, multiplying this one here, we have fh tan 30 is equal to c1. Because this expression will just be 0. And so now we already have our c1. And so let's plug these two into our general equation. And so let's just copy this one. Again, this will be 0. And then C1 will be FH tan 30. And so we have uh, Y is equal to 1 over FH and then WX squared over 2 plus FH tan 30 and then multiplied by X. And so the last thing that we are going to do is to find this constant value. Now, how can we find this one? Again, we still have another boundary condition. Now we can get that at this point because we know that at x is equal to 15, which is right here, our dy over dx will be equal to tangent 60 because the slope here is 60 degrees. And so let's just copy this one. Again, we are using this to solve fh, but we will not be plugging that one into this equation. Uh, instead, we'll be using this one because what we have is dy over dx. However, we already have C1, which is uh, FH tan 30. And so this will be uh, plus FH tan 30. Now our X should be replaced by 15. And so uh, this will be 15. And then we will replace W by 200 because our uniformly distributed load is 200 Newton per meter. So W will become 200. And then dy over dx will be tangent of 60 degrees. And so now we can solve FH. Let's just use our calculators. So we have uh, tangent 60 is equal to 1 over fh and then multiplied by 200 times 
15 and then plus x tangent 30 and so press shift solve you will be able to obtain fh now that's uh, 2598.076 and so this will be our fh however this is still the horizontal component but what we are looking for is the maximum tension which is developed in the cable now uh, we already have our answer for the first requirement which is the curve that defines the cable shape now it's this one however we need to substitute fh and w and so let's first solve that one. And so our equation will be y is equal to 1 over uh, 2598.076211. And then w, which is, uh, let's just copy this one. Our w is 200. And then uh, x squared over 2. Now this will simplify into 100. And so let's just change this one. And then plus uh, fh tan 30, we have uh, this value multiplied by tangent 30. Now that will give us... 1,500 and so we have 1,500 here and then multiplied by x and so this is already our general equation this will be the curve that defines the cable shape and then uh, next we have to find the maximum tension now the maximum tension is still unknown now you may ask where would the maximum tension occur uh, will it be here or here the answer is you will have to consider the larger angle and so since 60 degrees is greater than 30 we'll consider this one and so we will get the tension at this point and so let's write that here this is the resultant force now again our fh is 2598.076211 this is the horizontal component now we need to get tb and so we can use this one again tb and then cosine of 60 to get the horizontal component will be equal to 2598.076211 and so now we can solve tb now again this is just the horizontal component of the tension at b but what we are looking for is the actual tension at b and so we have uh, x cos 60 and then equals 2598.076211 and so our tb will be 5196.15 so tb is equal to 5196.15 and then this is in newtons and so this will be our answer and so now we can proceed to our next problem we have this one the cable is subjected to a uniform loading of uh, w is equal to 250 lb per feet now this is supposed to be here and then we are to find the maximum and minimum tension in the cable and so in order to find that we will just be essentially cutting at the maximum point or the maximum sag or for this one the minimum point and then we will sum up forces uh, horizontal and vertical and so let's say uh, this is the lowest point now we know that at the lowest point our slope is zero because at the point where the curve is minimum the tangent line will be a horizontal line and so the slope here is zero and so our tension force will be horizontal so let's uh, try to zoom in we can make a cut here and then we will have a resulting horizontal tension force and so let's label this as fh and so now uh, we can consider this cut again w is equal to uh, 250 lb per feet now let's try to extend this cut now if we will just consider the left portion which is this one then we can sum up forces vertical and horizontal now at this point we have our reaction and then that will be the maximum tension in the cable and then uh, the minimum tension in the cable will occur at the lowest point because our slope here is zero and so as i mentioned earlier the maximum tension will occur at the higher angle again the slope here is zero so this must be the lowest and then for this point we know that it is sloping at some angle so our maximum tension will naturally occur here and so again we will consider this cut now if this whole distance is 50 feet then this will be 25 again this is a symmetrical cable and so this will be 25 feet and so considering this half uh, we have a resultant force acting here which is at 12.5 meters or half of 25 so this is 12.5 feet and then this resultant is just equal to 250 lb per feet multiplied by 25 feet and so feet will cancel and then we are left with 6 to 50 pounds and so this is our resultant load uh, for the equivalent loading of this one and so now we can sum up forces vertical we have 6 to 50 which is downward or negative and then plus the vertical component of this one now let's label that as uh, tay or the vertical component of the tension at a uh, let's just label this as a and then this one as b and then we will equate this one to zero and so now we know that tay is just equal to 6 to 50 and then pounds now we still need to find fh because if we will sum up horizontal forces we cannot get ax 
because this is our horizontal force and it's unknown. And so to get FH, we will take moments about A so that we can exclude the forces here. And so taking moments about A, we have uh, FH. Now this is negative because applying a force to the right here will cause a counterclockwise rotation about A. And then we'll multiply this by the moment arm. Now the moment arm is 6 feet because it is the perpendicular distance toward point A. And so we will multiply this by 6. And then we also need to consider this load. Now this load will cause a clockwise moment about A. And so this will be plus and then 6 to 50. And then we will multiply this one by the moment arm. Now that moment arm is 12.5 feet because this is the perpendicular distance. And so times 12.5, we will set that to 0. And so solving FH, we have a negative x times 6 plus 6 to 50 times 12.5 is equal to 0. We will get uh, 13,020.83. So FH will be 1320.83 and then pounds. So this will be our answer for uh, the minimum tension. Now for the maximum tension, uh, we have to find the resultant reaction at A. Now we already have TAY. And then since if we sum up forces horizontal, we have TAX is equal to FH. We can say that TAX is equal to this value. So that will be 1320.83 and then pounds. And so to get the tension at A, we will just get the resultant of these components. Now again, uh, if we are to draw this one, uh, this is TAX, this is TA, and this is TAY. And then if we will draw a triangle, it will look like this one. Uh, we have TAX, and then TAY, and then TA. Now again, TAX will just be equal to FH. And then TAY will be equal to W times x over 2 because we are only considering half. And so you may just use this triangle. Now moving on, uh, we have TA is equal to uh, 1320.83 and then squared plus 6 to 50 squared. And so we have a square root of 1320.83 squared and then plus 6 to 50 squared. And so that will be 14443.15. And so this will be our answer for the maximum tension. So I'll just copy this one and then let's write that here. And so these are our answers.